For those of you who are new to Textile Talks, it is a weekly series of webinars um, and, pre and presentations and panel discussions from fiber art organizations, including the International Quilt Museum, the Quilt Alliance, San Jose Museum of Quilts and Textiles, Studio Art Quilt Associates, Surface Design Association, and us at the Modern Quilt Guild. We are so thankful to our sponsors. We are sponsored by Arafil, Artist Artifacts, CNT Publishing, Empty Spools Seminars, eQuilter.com, Handy Quilter, Misty Fuse, Moda Fabrics and Supplies, Nine Patch Fabrics, Quilt Mania, Schiffer Publishing, and TheQuiltShow.com. So now that we are here, we have arrived, let me please introduce you to our two panelists today. Uh, we have Marla Arne Jackson, and she is a self-taught fiber artist, painter, doll maker, indigo dyer, shibori dyer, portrait artist, seamstress, and now an author. She runs the gamut. Um, <laughs> she is world renowned for vi visual narrative artist and quilter, and she is a community-based visual art educator. Her works have, have been exhibited in more than 35 national and international venues, including the American Folk Art Museum and the Smithsonian National Museum of African American History and Culture. Uh, we also ha have Alita Crawley with us today. She is a board member of the Modern Quilt Guild. She is also a maker of many things, including quilts, crafts, gardens, good food, and friends. Uh, she has a background in ad sales and nonprofits and happily blends her professional and personal experience by volunteering in Quilt Guild and beyond. So without further ado, I will, I will go away and come back at the end for the Q&A and I will hand it over to Alita. So sit back and enjoy the presentation. Thank you so much, Brenna. Um, I'm just going to bring up my screen. Let's see. And this is going to be a really fun one because what one of the things that I love about Marla's work is that she incorporates so many different parts of quilting and fiber art. So um, we're going to see a lot of different things incorporated in her work. All right, it says one minute left. But um, while we're waiting, I can still ask the question. Um, the first question is, Marla, please uh, define for us Sankofa. Okay, Sankofa is a tweak word from Ghana and it means go back and fetch it. And to me, I interpret that as taking knowledge, going back to your community and sharing it. And uh, I made the cover of my book the women on my book represented, I was asked to participate in an exhibition at uh, Spencer Museum. It was during doing the Aaron Douglas exhibition. And I, I, my work didn't travel, but I was part of this exhibition. And so the women actually represent Aaron Douglas who started the part of the Harlem Renaissance. He's from Topeka, Kansas. So he was a local artist. Many of us heard of uh, Aaron Douglas. But the three women to the right, the first one is my mother, uh, my uh, baby sister who's tall, and my younger sister, my middle sister who's smaller. But the lady with the blue leg and with the cowrie shells, I made them bird-like figures because Sankofa represents a bird-like figure. And it's like got a heart you know, at the back of it. But I used it as knowledge. I put cowrie shells in my hair. I was 18 years old. I left home at 18. And I came back to Detroit to tell my mother all what I learned. They weren't going for it. But the lady at the right, at the bottom. And one, a one second, Marla. As soon as uh, Karen is able to open up my PowerPoint, you'll see what she's talking about. Yeah. It's the cover of her book. And so Mark, actually, would you hold up the cover? And that yes. way people will be able to see and pull back just a little bit. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. And thank so you. I was, you know, the cowrie shells in Africa represented value. 
and so and you know money and knowledge and wealth so I had the knowledge I thought at 18 I had all the answers and so the blue leg represented coming up from water and uh, so that's what that and this quilt is 83 by 83 I used cowrie shells on this quilt I also used um, ostrich fat plumes Man, I just applique. I use uh, metallic threads are on here. And it's one of my favorite quilts and it's huge. Uh, this quilt was acquired by the Spencer Museum of Art as part of their permanent collection. I'll let you know when to advance, Karen. Okay, I'm sorry, are you, are, where? Did you She's still talking about Sankofa, this okay. cover quilt. Okay, I got it. And this quilt was made, let's see, it had to have been made in 2006, because I think the exhibition was 2007, and I was chosen from the community. They chose two artists, and I was one of them, so I was fortunate to be a part of that exhibition. It was the most beautiful experience of my life. It was my first major exhibition as being part of uh, being part of, you know, Aaron Douglas exhibition, which traveled to the Smithsonian, but my quilt didn't travel. Okay. Um, we can so go to the is... next quilt, which okay. is Celia's, Celia's quilt. And, oh, sorry, Middle Passage. Sorry, go back one. Middle pa middle Thank you. Middle Passage. And so here middle I'd like to, to ask, the question I'd like to ask you is, how did you start quilting the way you started quilting? On this quilt? With middle. Or you how I started. About, you could talk about with, with middle quilting tech. practice in general. Okay. This quilt, I didn't have to die. Unfortunately, I found this boutique. And I never read the book by Charles Johnson. He talked about the blue man, you know, and it was just a weird thing that this man is blue. But I, you know, took the idea of those fighting on the ship among when they were stolen, they were going from Africa, uh, uh, you know, sailing to Europe to be sold. And I thought about a sardine can, how each person was just stuck in there. I put the women upside down I got women and men, I hand quilted this, machine quilted this. You see the man, it's the black and white figure. That represented the fracture of the black man. What was taken after slave to the right. The one on the right, it doesn't have any legs. Southeast corner. Right, it doesn't have arms. He doesn't even feel like he has any self-worth. You know, this is to the right. Yes, to the right corner. The body of yeah. the whole right. And, and, I, and that man, I want, I did put a lot of, I quilted it with a lot of texture and you can actually feel him. I allow people to touch and feel this quilt. And, um, you know, it's, this quilt is, 60 by 49 inches wide. Did you dye the fabric yourself? Now this piece, this piece wasn't dyed. I didn't dye any of this fabric. I happened to find this fabric and I had it for a long time. I got a lot of my fabrics were came from Detroit. My mother would send me fabrics because when I moved to Kansas, I wasn't able to find any. They used to have a shop in Kansas City and the fabrics weren't available. Are you seeing a, a glare on my from my glass? Is it really bad? I think it's fine. I think okay. it's okay. Okay. And so I got cowrie shells and I just, you know, cut out different pieces of fabric. And sometimes this quilt makes me cry, you know, and I look at it and I just just painful, you know, painful. Mm -hmm. Well, that's going to bring us up to the next quilt, which we talked about, and that's Celia's quilt. Yeah, and, Celia's story. Um, 
what you'll need to do is let's think of it as a clock and let's start at 12 o'clock at the at the very top and the center and talk about Celia's story. If you could give us a, a brief synopsis sure. of the quilt sure. and then talk about the elements that you've included. Okay. In um, one moment, Marla. Is it possible sure. to zoom the image, uh, Karen? Sometimes if you hit command and plus. Mm. If you zoom in on the PowerPoint. Go back one. All right. Hmm. There we go. And now just do that on the on the click on the the image part and do the same thing you just did. You can just bring it out. There we go. Yes. All right. Better. All right. Thanks everyone for your patience. All right, Marla, if you could so start okay. again. Okay. This story is a true story. It happened in, excuse me. I apologize for that. Let me turn this off. This story is, is, is a true story. It was out of Missouri. And it was in 1855, there was a man by the name of Mr. Newsom. He had lost his wife had passed away and he had bought uh, Celia. She was 14 years old when she got pregnant. She, would, she had been pregnant two other times. She had a, a black boyfriend, another person, another slave that was her, boy, her, her, her boyfriend. And then Mr. Newsom would have sex with her whenever he chose to and she was pregnant and Mr. Newsom came down to her slave quarter and she told him he was she was not feeling well could he wait until you know she after the baby came and Mr. Newsom wanted to have sex with her then and there and she kept begging him and she, she saw a lot there was a log in her cabin and she hit him in the head and he died she killed him. And so what she, if you notice up in the left-hand corner at the top, there's a photo, a picture of a woman. That's her. She put his body in her uh, fireplace and she burnt him up. And she had his uh, grandson take the ashes and spread them about. Then people start looking for Mr. Dusen and they, you know, they were questioning people and the, they questioned the boyfriend and he told on her. So they arrested her while she was in jail. Celia had a, had missed her baby. He was, uh, the baby was stillborn. If you notice, there's a little pocket there. I put the baby in the pocket around cotton. That's cotton fab, cotton. That would be and it says stillborn. Seven Hold on, Marla, just so that I can tell Karen where it is. That would be about seven o'clock. Yep. Right there. Right there. And I can show you a better, you know, after the book. And if you notice, there's a little boy to the right standing. That's her son. And they hung her. And this is chapter two, the resistance. And she told him no. She said no. And I use denim because of slavery. If you notice, if you take a very good look, you'll see that pockets open at the bottom. I opened, I left that pocket open. It represents the rape. And um, this was part, this was on exhibition in 2018. I had a Me Too exhibition and it doesn't seem so long ago. This just seems so present and so current today. You know, she they had a hearing and found her guilty and hung her. And every year 
at Columbia, Columbia, Columbia University in Missouri, law, this is the first year lawsuit, they, they debate this case, whether or not she had the legal right to say no. Well, they said, according to the courts, she didn't own herself, she didn't have any rights. And so he had, you know, he was, had every right to rape her because she was property. And so she said no. She told him no. Okay. We can go to the next one, Karen, which is Billie Holiday. A number of your quilts are, are narratives, but a number, a large number of them are also um, pictorial of yes. famous people. How do you decide um, where, well, who's going to be represented in your quilts? The um, and then, and then the, the fabrics and things that, that draw you to that particular uh, piece, that particular work. Well, this is part, this is chapter, I think chapter uh, two, and it's in, called Jim Crow Row. Mm -hmm. And we know back during the time, Billie Holiday, she suffered a lot, you know, she was our, one of our greatest singers, but she still had to come through the back door. And Billie Holiday was pretty fair and she was so light until they had her darken her skin. And that's why I put Chantilly Lace on her face. And I put, uh, in, you know, I, uh, put sequins on her eyes. And uh, I started off with a pattern and I've decided, no, I enlarged her jawbone to give her more of a profile. I used po upholstery fabric with her in the background. I just think she was just a lady sings the blue. She was a queen and I wanted her to, to look and feel, you know, and give her the respect that she was due. How do you know when a quilt and like this is 20... finished? Finish? Yes, how do you know when when that's you, you, I know I, I, because I have it already in mind how much you know you can put too much you have to know when to stop um I like beautiful things but it doesn't have to be a lot you know I just think her eyes are striking she's just you know I just wanted to give her, like it's actually a tapestry velvet trim on this quilt. We just had it for the book, you know, uh, size down. But this one, Billie Holiday, you know, it's just, she just speaks for herself. I use metallic threads on her. Okay. We'll bring up the and, next and one. And the quilting. We'll bring up the next quilt, Karen. Oh my goodness, this is my quilt. This is Ma Rainey, 18 by 20. It was the most difficult quilt I've ever made because I said, now I know I am an artist. You know, Ma Rainey was uh, very popular in the 20s. And she was like the mother, she was before Bessie Smith. She was the mother of the blues. She was not poor. She would get on the stage. They said she was dripped in diamonds and gold on the stage. She owned the stage. She had gold in her teeth. I put gold sequins between on her teeth. I went behind the quilt, made a hole, came, lifted it up to make her lips. I stuffed her lips sewed those down, she had very full mouth. And I made sure I put every element of this woman. And I just love it. I just think she's beautiful. Most people didn't think she was beautiful, but um, when you work on someone and I research every quilt I make, I become part of the story. I become part of the quilt and um, I hope you understand what I'm saying when I say that, you know, it's just become part of me. I research for about maybe 90 days to make sure I haven't missed anything about the individual because even though, you know, I don't have the full story, but I know uh, 
I just wanted her to look like royalty. Beautiful. And I just. I wanted to ask you how exciting was it for you to get an award from Faith Ringgold? Oh my goodness gracious. It was, it was a life changing experience. Faith Ringo in 2017 was, I keep, was the keynote speaker for the African-American Quilt Convention, which I founded and I had a lot of support from many support systems in Lawrence Spencer Museum, Lawrence Art Center, the city of Lawrence, you name it, everybody was excited about having her and she came to speak. And she says, little girl, I wanna see your gallery. And so we, I took her to my gallery, we looked around and she says, do you have a book? And I says, no, I don't. She says, why not? I said, because I'm not good enough. She says, you better have a book made in six months. <laughs> and she says, and so I'll write you for it for you. You get it done. She says, she told her assistant, uh, Grace Matthews, and you can help her out get Grace and just direct her. But, and then I got a letter from her stating that you have been awarded the Anyone Can Fly Award, a lifetime achievement for the African-American arts. It was amazing, amazing feeling to be in her home, to be able to be part of her family, I can't explain it to you, but it's, she has empowered me like no other to accept who I am, be myself, continue to do my work and continue to work. I work with so, in so many areas with different people, different programs that I've developed. And she works with kids too. So we have that in common, but I love her. Absolutely love her. And she came to visit us again in 2018. So she came twice, but in Lawrence, she's our family. She got to go around to the different organizations in Lawrence, Van Gogh, the Lawrence Art Center, Spencer Museum, she gave a talk. So everybody got to enjoy her. So it is the greatest honor, the greatest honor receiving that award. It's like having a baby. <laughs> So I'm going to bring up the next when you quote first ask you uh, what made you decide to pursue uh, a national quilt convention for African Americans. I and want to talk about reason, Ida in a minute. <laughs> okay, what inspired me? I got a grant from an organization, a national organization, it's local in our town. It's called Freedom's Frontier Heritage Area. And I was also, I'm also part of the Underground Railroad Network of Freedom, part of the National Park Service. And so I applied for an interpretive grant. And one of the, I always read the comments and what the uh, reviewers are saying. And one of the reviewers made a comment. He said, if you're going to do, where we sell, I apply for the grant for the 150 year of Con Quantrell's raid. And one of the reviewers wrote, if I'm gonna do an interview to make it balance, please interview Missouri and Kansas about the Civil War. And they shared a story with me, the woman shared a story with me, Carol Bowl, who was the uh, direct, she was the former director of the Historical Society in uh, Harrisonville, Missouri. And she talked about a slave by the name of Maria Rogers Martin, who did not want to be freed by the Union soldiers. So I had research and I found out that Maria was a quilter and she was an early quilter. We have two quilts that display of her quilts displayed at uh, during the first uh, exhibition in 2017 at the Spencer Museum, Museum of Art. And it was just fabulous. And I said, I am gonna, it took me, it was seven years of research. And I said, I'm gonna celebrate Maria by having a national African-American quilt convention. And I'm gonna do this every year. 
the first year and second year, we went to her grave site, which is in, she, she lives on, she's buried on the plantation and it was 49 slaves originally from Tennessee and she's buried there. Her family's buried there. The slave owners, they're all buried together as a family, white and black. And Maria went back to the plantation after her later years went back. She sent her children back to the plantation and her son became uh, one of the biggest, uh, oh, what was he? He worked, oh, blacksmith in Missouri, the first, and uh, was very successful. So that's why I started the National African-American Quilt Con Convention in her honor. But yet with this in mind, I want it for us to come together, to know one another. I knew nothing about quilting. I knew more about art quilting. I remember I joined an art group and I put, I was quilting, I was sewing on embellishments. I was doing it all at the same time. And they were just tickled to death. But that's how, that's my process. I do so it all at the same time. You, you bring me into us talking about Ida B. Wells and the quilt here. And I've seen a lot of questions. Would you start with her hair and talk about all of the different yes. elements that you have on this quilt? Elements in her hair. Okay. I used uh, Mackler, uh, what is it? Maclame? What is it? What is that? That that coil, what is that rope? Macrame yarn. That rope from macrame. 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 I, I, I coil, yes, I took that, that took the twine, wherever, and I coiled her hair and I sewed it down, hand sewed it. And then I, uh, her face, I pieced her face. I, I start out with paper behind and I just glued fabric to the paper and I was able to mold her face. I, I took a light wash of acrylic paint over her. Now, I wanted to give her a young looking face and an older neck because I want, there's a lot of Ida B. Wells, young women, I want to identify with her. I want to bring the, young, the youth in to understand who, why and who she was. And uh, I just love her. I use lace. Man, this, it took me about eight months to make her. I'm just looking at her. And are the beads strung together um, by you? That's not, that's a necklace that you made. Is that correct? Th that's just, a, I bought a string of beads and I just tacked it, tacked it to her blouse, to the lace. And this is just lace. And I just layered the fabric on her. Do you have a favorite part of the quilting process or the creative process? I, what I do, the most important thing I do is research first. It's the research and then it's the visual and then it's, I take it all in and I become Ida B. Wells. And she was a proud woman, elegant woman. And uh, I wanted to speak for her. I love her eyes. And um, are the eyes I just love it. Or is that fabric? That's fabric. Fabric. All right, let's go to the next quilt. So this is something that's very different from all of the other um, quilts that are featured in the book. Yes. This is called Quiet Storm. This is about a young girl. She was 13 years old and no one knew she was pregnant. Growing up in a town, when I was living there, the population was 500. And it was, it was you know, back in the 60s and 70s in my little town, if you kissed a boy, you were ridiculed. And an older man got her pregnant. And so this was in the Me Too, also in the Me Too um, exhibition, it was at the African American Quilt Museum during 2018 was the Me Too exhibition. 
And so I was, you know, I had to make her. Is there any way we can bring her down a little bit to show her hair? Yeah, I put cowrie shells in her hair. I uh, sewed her hair down with gold metallic thread. Her eyes and lips, that's gold leather on her lips. But uh, this is, uh, I'm gonna see what size she is. It's pretty, she's pretty um, narrow, but she had the baby and unfortunately the baby had fiber, you know, what was very ill, the baby didn't live, but I remember this. How this is a me too has quote. evolved over the years? Wow. I think I am, I have um, open up more, open up. I started with narrative quilts, portraits. Now I'm interested in learning modern quilting. And so I, I, I am in the new millennium. <laughs> I said I would never do it. I'm going to keep doing my portraits. But if you want to stay relevant, you want to have a conversation, you have to know it all. I think, I think you know, I, I do a lot of things and I'm so open to knowledge and, and new things and new opportunities to show them and, and, and to teach. Is the fabric that is on her clothing shibori that you did yourself? No, that's fabric. That's just some fabric that my mom has sent me. Okay. All right. My well, shibori quilting, it was very early on. I, uh, my teacher, her name is Rose Cop. She taught me every fiber technique there is. She went to Kansas University in fiber art. She was one of the best that I know. And um, it was just incredible. All right, we'll go to the next quilt. We were talking about whether you had a favorite. Yes. You mentioned <laughs> this one. Yes, I do. Michelle Obama, Michelle Obama. I was reading Becoming and I said, as I was reading this book, I said, I'm gonna make a quilt. I remember Michelle when she was standing next to the former president and during the inauguration, she was right next to him. This looks three-dimensional, but it's just one layer of fabric. I wanted people to know her pain, what she experienced as a black queen, the discrimination, the hurt, you know, raising the kids, husband gone. I know what that's like, you know, but she's beautiful. I loved her hair. Her hair was very interesting to make. I took fabric and I cut the fabric in circles and I sewed it with a sewing machine going around it, you know, and gave her a lot of texture in her hair, more of an ethnic look in her hair. But she's, she's, she is amazing and she's for sale. So and what I, only, the only acrylic paint I put on her was a little bit on her lips to give her a little shine. The rest is all fabric. And I drape, I love draping, draping my fabrics. My question to you is what's next for you? What's next for Marla Jackson? Wow. Whew. In 1983, I started the girl, African-American Girl Scout troop. In 2008, I started the first uh, Beyond the Book program where I worked with students. Now I'm working with felons, first time felons. I'm teaching art 
and um, given support. And we're gonna start sublimation. You know what sublimation is, the technique of using sublimation paper, special ink and a heat press. And it, it, it starts a, a permanent tattoo like in a t-shirt. And I was thinking about taking my quilts and putting all of my quilts on them and print them and quilt them just to see what the texture's like. And so I'll be selling t-shirts, printing them, selling mugs, merchandising. My next book will be out in 2022. It's a memoir about Marla Jackson. And then I'm writing a book about Maria Rogers Martin and uh, telling her story. I have all the research is done on her. All the photos have been taken. So I've been preparing, you know, my mother taught us very early. If you wanna get something done, you have to be prepared at all times. You have to be ready. So in 2017, for this book, my photos were already completed. My research was done for Maria. I, did, I had um, another person do the research as well. And a lot of times when you're researching African-Americans, I go by black. When you research people, you cannot lump a, one individual together and decide, well, this is what Maria was doing in Lawrence, Kansas. Maria was already educated. Her mother took Mr., uh, her slave owner's daughter to school. And while she was going to taking her to school, she was learning and the slave owner wife was teaching her. And therefore she taught Maria to read and write and the slave owner's wife taught all of the slaves. And one of the things the slave owner said, there's the way you treat a slave, first of all, you take care of their physical needs, their spiritual needs, and an uneducated person will never serve you a purpose. So Mr. Brown was a very, uh, he was a businessman and he kept his promise to the slaves when they came back. He, matter of fact, he helped a lot of the people in Missouri because of um, doing the border war, um, uh, it was order number 11 where they burned down part of Missouri. A lot of the homes were burned, but Mr. Uh, Brown had over 2000 acres and he helped everybody in the town, blacks and whites. They all share crop from him. I know that you learned um, a lot of your skills or a number of your skills from your mom. Uh, yes. Do any of your children or grandchildren quilt or pursue other artistic endeavors? Of course not. My <laughs> daughter went to K. Of course not. My daughter went to K KU for graphic and design. Very good, but she's a she's a a, a captain in the Air Force. She's a nurse. She's got she's in grad. She starts graduate school. She'll get her PhD. Then my daughter lives in Bali, Indonesia, and she does social media. She's a photographer, a makeup artist. I taught her. She said it was child labor. And I taught, I, I was a makeup artist. I did it all, done it all. And she, I trained her. And so she lives there. And then my son was a lieutenant in the uh, prison. Now he's retired. And so um, none of them, they, I can't even mention the word quilts to them. <laughs> is there a quilt that you want to do but have not yet gotten to? I want to do a quilt of myself and doing every in every capacity that I've worked in, you know, every, every, you know, I, that's what I would like to do myself. Like my daughter asked me, my birthday was October the 22nd. She goes, mom, how are you going to be? I said, 65. She goes, Mom, no, you're not. I said, yes, I am. She says, I was so convincing. She says, Mom, you're going to be 68. And I said, in, two, in 2022, I'm going to be 70. Unbelievable. That scared me. It stopped. I was frozen because I want to go back and get my degree. So... 
I'm thinking about it. I hope they're not on here <laughs> listening. So I, I did want to leave some time for questions. And okay. um, I have a few here. Okay. Um, and so one question is, what is the difference between a fiber artist and a textile artist? None. <laughs> I don't think there's any difference. Uh, the next question up was uh, on the Ida B. Wells quilt. Was the jewelry real? No, it, it was it was just regular. I got the beads from I got the beads from um, Hobby Lobby. Okay, and yes, I think we did answer that one. Um, and so I have a request to talk about the lower part of Quiet Storm. Uh, the loose fabric uh, was found to be interesting. And that was from Julia. And and her question is, she she just is asking about the the lower part of it again. That one, I, dra I draped it. I draped the fabric. Number eight, uh, Karen. Yes. Yeah. It, those are very those different. Are, yes, it is. It's, I have a series of I call skinny girl quilts, and so I have a series of these quilts. And uh, you know, there's her hand. You know, how just, did you get the fabric to drape and, and to stay in that? I had that I tacked it down with, for, with, with the needle and thread. I pulled it up from, you know, and went through the back way with it. And I just tacked it. And I'm jumping back and forth. Someone had asked if your quilts are quilted. Yes. Okay, that's a quick answer. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, now is your er, book er, me back earlier days when I didn't know I was putting a hot glue gun on them, <laughs> but they're quilted now. <laughs> uh, is your book narrative of the souls available? The, the book is called, we changed the name narrative. So it's Sankofa lessons learned. It is available. You can purchase the book at Marla RNA. Jackson.com and is available. And that's also been added to the chat. Thank you, Lucy. Yes. Um, are you planning another convention? Yes, ma'am. Well, the, that's our goal. I'm meeting with my sponsors and uh, we're gonna be having a Zoom meeting in January this month. And we're looking at 20, 22. I want to make sure everyone's got vaccines. You know, I don't want to take the risk right now in 2021, but 2022 is the goal. And that depends on grants and funding. And I have done the convention without grants, but we're going to need grants and we're going to need sponsors. And I would like to see this convention elevate the level of teachers, I believe in education. I believe you must, you know, I would go into classes and take classes and come back and not understand anything that was taught. I want them to be taught. I want them to learn techniques. I want us to be the best. We want the best teachers. We want this to be, I would love to see this, the National African-American Convention of the Midwest. I think, you know, of, of modern quilters. I, I want that. I want, I want the leadership. I want the sisterhood. I want a collaboration. That's I believe in I believe nothing is great unless it's been collaborated. Hmm. Kim asks, how do you apply Sankofa to yourself? That's who I am. Sankofa, all the lessons I have learned looking back, you know, just for an example. When I started my organization back in 2012, I took all of my money and invested it. And I knew all of my members are in positions where they cannot fundraise. And I said, well, my art will support me. And my art has supported me, that's or my, my nonprofit since 2012. I get a lot of support though from my, I get a lot, 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 lot of support from my, um, 
I'm sorry. I get a lot of support from my members, but the fundraising part is the tough part. And but we we're doing okay. Cassandra asks, um, what is in the middle layer of your portrait quilts? The middle layer is paper. I use, I actually print out their, the photo of the person and starting out, I do that for the eyes because I really like, I want to make sure the eyes are perfect, but that's, it's, it's a paper behind it. Sally and asked, Sally it helps asked me, if, oh, sorry, go ahead. It helps me mold the shape. I can, you can actually look at the, you know, like the cheekbone, you know, they can, they're more filled, you know, look more like a person. So a couple of people have asked if everyone is welcome to the African-American quilt convention. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Is this America? <laughs> Is this the home of the brave and free? African-American history is your history too. Everyone's welcome. That's what I want. I want everyone to know they're welcome. I would also like to, to just talk a little bit about your advocacy work because I know that that is important to you. And, and you were saying that in terms of, of giving to your community, you're also getting back and that that is inspiring some of your work as well. Right now, I got a grant from Douglas County Health Department. When you live in a town of about 104,000 people and we have 4% African-Americans who live here, We've never had a black judge, a black DA, black city commissioners, black mayor. We've never had any black control. But the one thing I said we can't control is our health. So COVID is my activism. I make masks. I give out masks. I educate how to wear the masks. I've got my uh, gallery uh it's i got you know like ready for COVID. you know i'm ready to open up my museum back up i have new wave air fresh air cleaning i'm ready for that but my uh mark rutledge he's a volunteer and he's done some a podcast talking to the black community in lawrence about how we can take care of our black community and our families and you know, being very, he's being very, very real. And I was speaking with someone from uh, Douglas County Health Department. She says, Marla, the things that Mr. Rutledge is speaking about, we didn't even think, didn't even think about, you know, some of the things people can do to get COVID, you know, while they're together. And so it, I just feel an obligation and a responsibility you know, this is what my mother, my mother, I did this. My mother is in a nursing home. She's got dementia now. And there was 13 people with COVID-19. She was the only person in the nursing home without COVID, not an antibody, nothing. Hmm. And I, my mother, it was an artist too. My mother was a great artist. And my mother was very outspoken and me making masks and donating the masks, this is what my mom would have wanted me to do. So I send them to the nursing homes. Uh, Mr. Rutledge takes them and he'll go down to the homeless shelters, any place where he sees someone, you know, need help, he'll give them a mask. He'll go down to, we have a place a link with people who can't afford to eat. He'll go down there, you know. Um, so we have taken on this responsibility. That is awesome. I know lots of quilters who have become mask makers over the last year. I got another question, um, just asking if you could talk a little bit more about replacing uh, paper with batting. And that'll be our last question. I, I use batting know. and paper. I use paper and batting. So your your layer would I be use backing, batting, I use, and paper, and then the, it, the fact- And, and the backing. Up. 
Yes. What I do, I quilt, I quilt the paper and the batting first and put the back of it because it's so thick. I don't want to, you know, tear up my sewing machine. I hand stitch and attach the back to the portrait quilts. So there's handwork on every single one of your quilts? Both mainly. Okay. Well, Marla, <laughs> <laughs> you know I'm a fan. I just want to say thank you and keep creating and doing the beautiful work you're thank doing. You. It is, thank it is you. a marvel um, to, to see it. And um, if you would hold up your book again so that people yes. can see. I just want to thank everybody. It's just, it's just amazing. The book is 12 by 12, hardback. It has a cover, comes off. We didn't spare any expense. Pull back. Yes. To the, there we go. And uh, it's a great joy. And I'm honored. I want to thank everybody all over the world. Thank you so much. And as soon as this pandemic is over, we can travel, can come and see you guys. You guys can come here, but I, you know, the African-American Quilt Convention is for everybody, everybody. I want every, you know, matter of fact, I'm looking for teachers. Um, I want um, from every race. Thank you so very much for, for sharing you. your work Thank and inspiring you. us today. Thank you so much, everybody. I've enjoyed myself and I'm honored. And Karen, Alita, Brianna and Lucy, and thank you and all of you guys here from all over the world. And I'm not gonna cry. <laughs> About to though. All right, the thank name of the book, because someone asked is Sankofa Lessons Learned. And that's uh, S-A-N-K-O-F-A, -A, Lessons Learned. Yes. And you can find the book on my website and you can go to Marla, you can go to Marla Quilts Inc. Secondchance.com and you can read about the Second Chance program working with this one parolee. He's getting off parole early. He's done an incredible job. Is that and the one who helped you with the book? No, that was another young man I worked oh. with. <laughs> he, he decided he decided he's going to college so he's he enrolled in school and the young man that's working with me now he's assist, assistant director beautiful i'm so so proud beautiful. just proud all right i'd like to thank everybody today for for joining us and i am not sure if i'm handing it back to lucy or brenna but um, from New Jersey, I'd like to say uh, Happy New Year to everybody, which I did forget to say. And I'm looking forward to uh, future textile talks and uh, just seeing what everybody creates and hearing from all of these amazing artists. All right. Thank you, Alita. Thank you, Marla. Thank you. And thank you. Thank everybody. you, Karen. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Take care, everybody. Be safe. <laughs>